Breaking news happening right now. Look at this, a massive response by firefighters and other first responders to a structure fire in the North Myrtle Beach area. We're told they're responding to Ocean Creek Drive off Highway 17. Our reporter on the scene, people are evacuating. WMBF News reporter Casey Watson live right there, bringing you a live report with everything we know right after this mega millions drawing on WMBF News at 11. Live, local, late breaking. WMBF News starts with breaking news. Good evening to you. I'm Eric Weisfeld. We do begin with breaking news tonight at 11. Firefighters responding to a huge blaze at a building along Ocean Creek Drive in North Myrtle Beach. WMBF News reporter Casey Watson on the scene right now. And Casey, really a big response to this blaze. Yeah, hey Eric, I am here in North Royal Beach off of Ocean Creek Drive. This is the Ocean Creek Plantation Resort. I'm going to step out of the way real quick. I actually sat behind the camera so I can show you what is going on. This is Lodge One and Restaurant right here that you're seeing. Now I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see this response that is happening here. North Myrtle Beach Fire, along with other agencies, have been dispatched. I can still hear more fire trucks coming up in this area to tend to this fire. I can also see smoke billowing from this building still. You can't see it right now because it is very dark in this area, but there are multiple different agencies here right now responding to this. This is a very, very active scene. Again, from what we know, North Royal Beach Fire was dispatched to this area tonight around 1030. There are multiple different agencies here working this scene right now. People from this lodge have gathered out here behind my camera. They were told they had to evacuate this building. We do not know much at this time, but once we found out more information, I will relay it to you right here on WMBF News on our Facebook page and also WMBFnews.com and our app. Live in North Myrtle Beach, Casey Watson, WMBF News. All right, Casey, you let us know when you learn some more information. We'll continue to check back with Casey throughout this broadcast. Right now, let's get your weekend started off with your first alert forecast. Meteorologist Robert Whitehurst giving us the first alert to some warmer temperatures for the weekend. That's what we want to hear, Robert. Yeah, the ups and downs, they continue. At least we're going back up as we head into the weekend. We were about 25 degrees colder today than we had yesterday. Notice there are a few more showers developing tonight. Very small, and there's a lot of gaps in here. But some light rain across interior Horry County, Marion County, even into downtown Florence now, seeing some very light rain. And that's kind of what we'll deal with as well. As we move through the weekend, a couple small showers around kind of from start to finish. It doesn't rain all day long, but you can't rule it out any time through the afternoon that we'll see one or two of these little showers rolling through. And when you're not dealing with one of these light showers, a lot of clouds around this weekend, but temperatures starting to warm up. Now, sort of on the cool side tonight, notice it is overcast. Temperatures right now into the 40s. Nice little swing of temperatures, middle 60s along the Grand Strand floor. It's a little colder. That warm air doesn't quite make it inland, but there are some 70s in the forecast this weekend. All the rest of your weekend forecast coming up. Right now we're updating a big story we brought you is breaking news last night at 11 o'clock. Horry County police are now saying no shots appear to have been fired at off campus housing near Coastal Carolina University. Last night we brought you live reports and video from the scene where a heavy police presence was found near the campus walk apartments off Hicks Circle. Authorities say they got a report of shots fired and a man barricaded himself inside an apartment. Students were instructed to shelter in place. Our reporter on the scene says some had to be evacuated by police. Now, eventually, authorities used tear gas to get the man out of the apartment very late Thursday night after we went off the air. Now we're learning he won't face any charges, but police say their investigation is ongoing. New at 11, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division's investigation into possible extortion in Horry County is complete. That investigation now in the hands of 15th Circuit Solicitor Jimmy Richardson. Richardson's office received it Thursday and his deputy chief is reviewing the case. He says that review should be complete next week. Now this comes after a request was made by the Horry County Administrator in December to check it all out. The administrator claims newly sworn in Horry County Council Chairman Johnny Gardner tried to manipulate the director of the Myrtle Beach Regional Economic Development Corporation during a meeting with an associate. That associate threatened to have a blog post, a disparaging story about the MBREDC director. A number of people have said the recording does not depict anything that would do with extortion. 
And new for you tonight, police say they have made an arrest after a bank robbery in Loris last week. Take a look at some video now from that scene on Valentine's Day. The Whiteville Police Department says Victoria Neal of Columbia, South Carolina, also robbed a bank in that city today, saying the circumstances were similar. Police say Neal robbed first bank in Whiteville this afternoon, but was seen in the parking lot and then arrested. We're told no one was hurt in that incident. Meanwhile, in Loris last week, authorities say a woman walked into a BB&T bank, told people she had a weapon, but no one inside the bank ever saw one. They say she demanded money and then walked out. Police searched the area for her for a time, but never found her. She's now facing at least one robbery with a dangerous weapon charge. And we have an update now to a story we first brought you as breaking news on WMBF News at 730 tonight. We're getting our first look at a man authorities arrested for threatening the Florence Center tonight. Florence police say this man, Tyhema Brown, is charged with unlawful communication. Authorities say he posted on social media threatening violence at the Florence Center tonight. Police say he was arrested inside the Magnolia Mall after 6 o'clock tonight. Take a look at the Florence Center's Facebook page. It confirms high school basketball games were being played tonight for the 2A lower state title. A game between North Augusta and Myrtle Beach, along with another game between Wilson and Darlington were played tonight. The Florence Center's website shows it's playing host to the South Carolina High Schools League lower state tournament through Sunday. In new at 11, some in the Grand Strand are talking about developments in the lawsuit against the Trump administration. This is over its plans for offshore drilling tests. A WNBF News reporter Casey Watson filed this report earlier tonight. Two men who both have the same amount of love for Grand Strand beaches, but two different opinions. One against offshore drilling. If it went south and if, if they had uh, an oil spill, then our our whole town, our whole community is, you know, shut down. And one for offshore drilling, if it's done by Americans. It's more than 12 miles offshore, which is where international waters begin. So somebody's going to drill there. If somebody's going to drill there, at least make sure it's an American company where we can hold their feet to the fire on safety. In a motion for an injunction filed Wednesday in federal court here in South Carolina, conservation groups are asking a judge to put prep work for the drilling along our coast on hold until their case is heard in court. Conservation groups and cities along South Carolina's coast seek to permanently halt the offshore drilling test. Ten states have joined the suit against the Trump administration, which alleges the National Marine Fisheries Service violated the Marine Mammal Protection Act, the Endangered Species Act, and the National Environmental Policy Act when it issued the permits. Richard says if the drilling were to happen, we could be endangering many habitats within the ocean. That's their home, and so anything we do to change their home is not good. If you came into my house and you put a drill drill in my house, though it's not good. In South Carolina, 16 cities are a part of the suit against the Trump administration. Many of those cities are here in the Grand Strand. I asked Land what he thought about this, and he said these cities are misguided. Uh, let's, you know, let's worry about something that's, you know, today. Let's worry about our infrastructure. Uh, let's do something about that. Maybe that's something the Democrats and Republicans are gonna agree on. Still to come at 11, a man dishonorably discharged after authorities say he killed soldiers at Fort Jackson. We're hearing from that man's wife next. And we are continuing to follow that breaking news from the North Myrtle Beach area where there is a large response by firefighters for a structure fire there. Casey Watson is there. She will be bringing you more information in a live report coming up right here on WMBF News at 11. Stay here. Now, WMBF News First Alert Meteorologist Robert Whitehurst. And we managed temperatures earlier today into the 60s. Keep in mind, that's a lot colder than the upper 70s from yesterday, but we've been dropping through the day. It feels like 44 right now. Temperatures area wide in the 40s, and that's where we are for tomorrow morning, but then improvements the next couple of afternoons, starting to warm the temperatures up. A lot of clouds around, though, this weekend, and we're dealing with a couple showers tonight, and we will see those throughout Saturday and Sunday. Now, it's not a steady rain. It's not a washout this weekend, but we can't rule out seeing some light rain from sunrise to sunset. Again, that risk is kind of throughout the day. A couple of breaks in the clouds do try to form tomorrow, but at times, again, a couple of those little showers rolling through. We actually get a cold front in here on Sunday. 
that one will bring a line of showers in that arrives for Florence, Darlington County by right around lunchtime, push it towards the Grand Strand into the early afternoon. But there's again not a ton of moisture to work with. Probably a thin line of showers that rolls through and the good news is behind it. Bit of a clearing trend. In fact, as that clears out, rain chances a lot lower. So afternoon, evening plans, dinner time plans, Sunday grilling out plans. Not expecting much rain. In fact, the clouds will continue to thin out. You can see the rain chances this weekend. While they're around, they're pretty low. And then we have to look to next Wednesday for more showers in the forecast. But even then, they're still low. We're not seeing any big rainmakers here over the next really five to six days. Temperatures try to warm up tomorrow. It's going to be a slow climb, but we'll get there. As we head through the afternoon, we bring some 60s back in. Notice where they're kind of focused. Horry County and Georgetown counties. Florence, it will be a bit cooler in west of Interstate 95, even cooler than that. So that warm air on Saturday will have a tough time pushing inland. It's a different story on Sunday. In fact, it's mild. It's warm to start the morning. Middle 60s this time of the year at 7 a.m. That is warm and they will continue to climb into the 70s. As we move to the afternoon, a few spots up around 72 to 73 degrees. So not a bad looking forecast at all, despite the clouds around. But it's a roller coaster ride. We've seen it the last five days, 70s, 50s, 60s, 50s, and it continues into next week where we hit 70 on Sunday, drop again for early next week, 70 again on Wednesday, and then in your seven day forecast, this is where the next drop arrives. That's towards the end of next week, back down into the middle 50s. But notice not a lot of rain in this seven day forecast. A couple scattered showers around this weekend and then a few more chances next week. But as I mentioned, no big storm systems here to provide any sort of heavy rain. And your inlet seven day forecast for Florence 58 Saturday, still the cool side, but warming up through the weekend, bringing back those 70s as we head into Sunday and then expect another drop to arrive soon. Again, dropping back down into the upper 50s as we head through early next week. And then we'll continue with that roller coaster ride. We'll hit 70 again by Wednesday, and then already looking ahead to what will likely be another drop. Temperatures going from 70 back down into the upper 50s by the end of next week. We are continuing to follow that breaking news for you from the North Myrtle Beach area, where massive response to a structure fire occurred in the past hour or so. WMBF news reporter Casey Watson live on the scene for us tonight. Casey, you have new information. is right whenever you said this is a massive response. I'm going to go ahead and step out of the way real quick so you can see exactly what I am seeing. There are multiple different agencies here responding right now. Now, I did just speak with the Horry County Public Information Officer, Anthony Casey, who told me that they are the lead unit here, that they are overseeing this active fire investigation. He did say that they responded around 1033 to a multi-structure fire here at the Ocean Resort uh, Lake. Andy, and I am in front of the Lodge One in re restaurant is where they responded. He doesn't have much on what caused this fire or if there is anybody injured. He said that this is still such an active investigation that he's going to give me that information as it becomes available to him. And so we are still here and I want to get a step out of the way. You can see there are multiple different agencies here. People have gathered outside of this lodge because they cannot go back inside. They've been out here since about 1030 tonight when those alarms went off in their building. Stay tuned to WMBF News tonight. Over the coming minutes, we will update you as more information because available. Go ahead and download our WMBF News app and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We will update you there as well. Live in North Pearl Beach, Casey Watson, WMBF News. See that huge activity behind you, Casey. We also saw that picture from Horry County Fire Rescue on Twitter tonight showing you just how massive those blazes are. So of course we will continue to check back with Casey later on throughout the show. Across the Carolinas now, a night when life changed forever for the families of two soldiers killed at Fort Jackson in October of 2017. But life also changed for the sergeant who fell asleep behind the wheel of a utility truck that ran down the soldiers. His wife wonders if any of this could have been avoided. Great Television's Greg Adeline has this story. The life of a military spouse is dotted with deployments, temporary goodbyes, and waiting. For Shankia Mero, the wait is just beginning, and it stings. I still have my breakdown moments, but I look at it as if he's deployed. Her mindset shields her from the stark reality that her husband of 10 years, Sergeant Andrew Mero, just began his 18-month sentence in a Charleston military prison for his role in the deaths of two privates, Timothy Ashcraft and Ethan Schrader. I really feel for the mothers that lost their, you know, lost their kids because no one wants to send their child 
to basic training and get that phone, you know, get that knock on the door saying that, you know, I'm sorry for your loss. Shankia can't shake the surreal moment when her friend called her with the news of the accident at Fort Jackson, October 6th, 2017. And she was like, two soldiers died, and she was like, and they saying it is your husband. And I just dropped everything in Walmart, and I went to the gate. Sergeant Merrill faced two counts of negligent homicide and one count of dereliction of duty for failing to stay awake behind the wheel of a one-ton truck that barreled into a formation of Army trainees, killing the two privates and injuring seven others. At his court-martial, Sergeant Merrow said he was exhausted the evening of the accident after getting very little sleep the night before. He didn't get no more than about four, maybe five hours. He didn't get a lot of sleep because he was the late man. From the stand, those who saw it happen spoke about the horror of the accident. But some also testified that Merrow was otherwise an excellent drill sergeant whose service included a tour in Iraq. He'd give you his shirt off his back. He, he's, a, he's an awesome person. I mean, I'm just sad that people couldn't see that. In court, prosecutors and the judge said in his fatigued condition, Sergeant Merrow should not have been driving that truck. Shankia, who served six years in the Army herself, believes her husband had no choice because he had a job to do and orders to follow. Nine times out of ten, he would have still been driving that truck. I'm, I'm almost sure. And yet, the unknowns linger. In a way, I feel that it could have been avoided, but I'm not going to say that it could have because we don't know. A sickening twist of fate with many victims the families of the two young men who lost their lives, the others who were injured, and other trainees who saw it all happen. And this mother raising her two teenage sons alone for now. Greg Adeline with that report. Now it's important to note that Sergeant Merrow originally faced seven and a half years for his charges, but as a result of his plea agreement, the sentence was reduced to 18 months, a dishonorable discharge, and his pay was lowered. People evacuated from several buildings in the North Myrtle Beach area tonight as firefighters are working ablaze. You are looking at pictures we've received from Facebook. Casey Watson is live on the scene. We're going to have much more for you coming up on WMBF News at 11. The city of Myrtle Beach says a lawsuit with Horry County Schools and the county itself could cost the city more than $42 million. Our news partners in Maori News reporting the city cannot borrow money for redevelopment projects at the former Air Force Base site because of a lawsuit challenging plans for that property. Horry County and the school district sued the city in December, saying the city and the Myrtle Beach Air Force Base Redevelopment Authority misused tax dollars and withheld millions from the county and the school district. But the city fired back Monday, accusing the county and the school district of a baseless, frivolous lawsuit. That suit centers on the city's decision to borrow money for an infrastructure plan in the Market Common District instead of building a new school. We are continuing to follow that breaking news for you from the North Myrtle Beach area tonight. That massive response to a structure fire there. WMBF News reporter Casey Watson live on the scene for us tonight, gathering information all evening long for us. What is the newest information you've received, Casey? Yeah, Eric, I am still here. This is off of Ocean Creek Drive. This is the Ocean Creek Resort Plantation. And I'm going to turn the camera around real quick so you can see where this fire is actually concentrated. This is Lodge One. This is where they are saying that this fire began and it is centered here. It is not spread to any other buildings. Now, right now, we are live on Facebook. We also are updating all of our social media apps. That is our Facebook app, also on WMBF News app and our WMBFnews.com website. We are updating all that. So for more information on this, go ahead and jump over there. Make sure you're following us on those social media accounts so you can get the latest information. Right now, there is still so much going on. This is a very active scene, and we're going to be updating you there as we get more information. Live in North Carolina Beach, Casey Watson, WMBF News. Straight ahead, WMBF News reporter Ian Klein learning more about the brand new Boys and Girls Club of the Grand Strand, how much it's costing, plus when it plans to open. Keep it here.
Construction of the new Boys and Girls Club in Myrtle Beach is moving along quickly and is expected to be ready to go by next school year. WMBF News reporter Ian Klein spoke with several student athletes who have been strongly impacted by the Boys and Girls Club over the past two decades. It, it's a family. It's like a second home to me. Yeah, I'm really excited because being here through all these years, I get to experience all these new changes, which is a great thing for me and all the other members there. Jaheem Williams has been with the Boys and Girls Club since he was in kindergarten. Twelve years later, he helped the Myrtle Beach Seahawks capture a state championship. They helped me and a few others there by, by always coming to our game, supporting us like a family. One of the donors for the $3.3 million project is Myrtle Beach native and NBA point guard Ramon Sessions, who will be able to host future basketball camps inside the facility's new gymnasium. If you look around the community, it's not it's not as many places as I think it should be for where the kids can come and, and be and get away from everything and, and have a good time and like you say, play sports and do their homework and be around people that care about them. The new facility is not expected to be open until September, but will give new opportunities to students and athletes here in the Grand Strand, not just on the field, but more importantly, in the classroom. The struggle for a lot of athletes is balancing the academics with their athletic ability. Dion Buento, CEO of the Boys and Girls Club, travels across the state to support both current and former students. One of those, Alex Burrows. Everyone there is pretty much like family. They help guide me to not only finishing high school and getting my grade better when I was in high school, but also getting me, showing me a path for my future, helping me get into National Guard, get into college, playing lacrosse. Like, they've just really impacted my life heavily, and I would, I really wouldn't think I'd be the man I am today or the person doing the things I am if it wasn't for the club. As the Boys and Girls Club gets closer to its grand opening, Buento has a simple message for all her kids involved in sports. For people like Ms. Dion, she, she's always told us that, that, that we, are, we are student athletes, we are not athlete students. We're able to give um, our athletes who are in our program kind of a stable environment to study in and some mentoring to help them kind of develop their leadership skills and keep on track academically so that they can move on to college and then become successful um, collegiate athletes. Reporting in Myrtle Beach, Ian Klein, WMBF News. And the Boys and Girls Club is also hosting its annual Red Light, Blue Light Flag football tournament featuring Horry County First Responders. That's Saturday, March 30th. The big story of the night, that breaking news we're continuing to follow in the North Myrtle Beach area. Massive response to a structure fire there. WMBF News reporter Casey Watson live on the scene right now. And Casey, you have another look at the flames now, right? Yeah, Eric, I've been here since about 1055 tonight. This fire was initially reported about 1033. Now, I just spoke with a young woman who was here when it happened. I believe we have that video up right now on our screen. You can see how high those flames, how massive this fire was at that point in time. Now, I also just spoke with a spokesperson with Horry County Fire. They are overseeing this fire investigation right now. And he said that they are still working to put this fire out. It's not completely contained right now and it is still fully involved. Right now he is not giving me any reported injuries or really giving me much information because he doesn't know much information. So we're still working to learn this because as you can see behind me, this is still a very active scene. Go ahead and follow us on Facebook, Twitter. You can hop on over to Casey Watson, WNBF News for our Facebook Live. That's also on the WNBF Facebook. And of course, follow us on WNBFnews.com. Live in North Myrtle Beach, Casey Watson, WNBF News. This will stay on that scene until it is under control the latest tomorrow morning on WMBF News today beginning at 7. Yeah, and at the least they're not seeing too many issues uh, with the weather tonight. Good. And uh, no issues really over the weekend as well. 60s tomorrow, bring the 70s back by Sunday. Please be safe this weekend. Our next news starts tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. We'll have the latest on that fire then. Have a good night.